I feel like I just got rich so I could just train every day. So your suggestion is then create a cash flow business online that allows you the freedom of time, freedom of location, that allows you enough cash flows to give you the time to think and only go for the one where you can hit the 100x on. So many people try to focus on like so many different things, especially when it comes to money, right? They chase $100 here, $100 there, $100. Actually, if you just sat down and just thought about it in a more strategic way, I guarantee you that you could just walk over here and get $10,000. Where do you look next to get some good price leverage so that whatever you buy goes up in, in, in a higher value range. I still believe in Bitcoin. I still believe that the price today in 10 years, it just gets bigger and bigger. What's the accumulation goal for you? If it, we're talking about a dollar amount, I guess you just start getting respect if you got that billionaire by your name. And to be like the first kind of like Islander in that, to do that will be kind of cool. I think a lot of the things that hold people back is, is being too afraid to reinvent themselves at the time when they need to do it. Yeah. I've always been interested in what's next. I understand that what works now isn't going to work tomorrow because because why it didn't work yesterday. And we are back, coming to you live from my favorite penthouse in Dubai. I've got Sam back on the podcast today, and we're going to talk all things money, business, success, and how you can level up every area of your life this year. Sam, welcome back. My hey, man. what's up, man? Thanks for having me, bro. Mate, thanks it's, for, uh, it's good to be coming here. to my house, man. Appreciate it. Bro, it's, it's it's good to be it's good to be back here. Like this view is unbelievable, and people. This is why you should watch this on YouTube because the view behind Sam on YouTube right now is unbelievable scenes, mate. How inspiring is it to, for you to kind of live in a place like this, knowing where you've come from when you grew up? Oh, it's crazy. I post it up every day, like every day. First thing in the morning, I I pretty much have a coffee and I post my view, and like I spend five to ten minutes like positive affirmations, and I also show gratitude like for my journey and then I just look and I'm like damn like I'm here right now and then I just think about my next five years my next 10 years and where I'm going to be so Mate, like I, every day I utilize that view I love it because obviously like if, if, if any of you want to understand Sam's journey truly in depth look, there'll be a link under this podcast to go and watch our first podcast and we'll, we'll cover it that covers his whole journey there but obviously Sam went from working the doors on nightclubs to having his own <laughs> Facebook page where his virality and everything like that and everything in between, haven't you? Like to, to get to this point. It's just been, literally, it's, yeah, yeah. It's mental. I've done a lot of things. And if you check that first podcast out, pretty much break it, break it down into like a lot of detail. But I really want to focus on this last 12 to 16 months of your life and how it's evolved. I kind of want to know really and start with what is the key thing this year that's kind of changed your perspective on how you approach business and life? Or pretty much this year and even I started last year. I started last year with this year's energy. I'm just like, you know what? Like the money and success, I'm putting it first before anything. Like this is my ship. This is my journey. I'm the captain, right? And like, I just literally looked at everything that I've done in life. And I'm like, I know what to do. Do you know what I mean? Like everything that I've done, I always figured it out. Whatever industry I went in, whatever venture I went in, I always quickly went and understood the ceiling and kind of broke through the ceiling and, all, every venture I went through, so I'm like, you know what, man? Like, I'm the captain of my ship. I'm sailing this to success. So anyone else who's not on that journey, like, you got to get off. And that's pretty much the energy that I took into this year. And, like, everything's been happening for me since, you know? Like, the more I focus on work, the more I focus on networking, the more I focus on building connections. Because at the end of the day, there's so many other people that are doing business in that and are looking for business opportunities with the right person. So it's all about meeting the right people, building relationships, because I have so much assets. Another person brings in other assets, and together, it works. So it's all about making sure that you keep connecting with the right people. So pretty much just every day from when I wake up to when I go to sleep, even when I dream, bro, I'll be just dreaming about the next level. And like that's my whole focus this year. What's the biggest asset that this audience can build this year that's going to take them to the, to the kind of levels that you're seeing right now and being sat on the palm in a beautiful place like this? Like, what is the, what is the, the where, where is the asset that people should start with? I believe that, first of all, it's like being a realist, right? That this is a long journey. It's not, okay, you can win the lotto. You can go down the road and buy a lotto ticket and your numbers get cold and you become success, you become rich. Well, that doesn't happen for ninety nine point nine nine percent of the population. You really got to just understand that this is a this is a grind. It's a never ending grind to keep getting to the next level. And I believe that when I look back at everything that I did since I was young, it was literally building a personal brand. 
people knew me when I was younger as Fortify, that music guy in the club, running nightclubs and all of that. Uh, then I became like the app guy. You know what I mean? And then I just kept getting more knowledge, learning from new people, and I just kept evolving and just keep up building my skill set up. But along the whole journey, I always like made sure that I documented my journey in, in my own way, in my own style. And I believe that's what is a big catalyst to just opening up more opportunities is building a personal brand. You could be the most successful person in the world, but if no one knows about you, then no one knows about you, right? Like Elon Musk, for example, he's, he's the biggest influencer in the world, right? He doesn't spend money on marketing for his companies, right? Tesla, they don't spend, they don't have a marketing budget. He's the marketing guy. So I believe personal brand is like super important for anyone. doesn't matter what your niche is. If you can reach that on a global audience, it's at least going to be a million dollar niche. You've had to reinvent yourself many times along this process. And I think a lot of the things that hold people back is, is being too afraid to reinvent themselves at the time when they need to do it. Yeah. So how have you kind of overcome that part of it? I've just always been interested in technology and I've always been interested in what's next. I understand that what works now isn't going to work tomorrow because why? It didn't work yesterday. Do you know what I mean? So it's just kind of having that understanding and that realiza- realization that what works today is not going to work tomorrow. So that keeps me striving. That keeps me motivated. That keeps me having a thirst for knowledge. Like every day, like I've got a big cinema room. I can't tell you the last time I watched a movie. Like I just literally consume document documentaries, like documentaries about the past. That's how you learn about what could happen in the future. Uh, documentaries on non-fiction stuff, you know what I mean? Like stuff that y- you can actually learn from, stuff that they don't teach you in schools, stuff that, that you don't learn in, in e- everyday life. So I don't watch movies, I don't watch TV, I just, I just learn, learn, learn. What are, the, what are the things that people should be studying right now and, and, and really getting their mind into? I believe this year, especially this year, everyone needs to focus on like crypto and, and Bitcoin especially. You know, like a lot of people don't really understand that during that whole COVID period, right? The, uh, pretty much every government started spending a lot of money, like printing way more money, way more money than they got in, collected in tax revenues. So the inflation went up. Everyone got rich in 2020, 2021. You remember that? Yeah. But every asset also went up as well. So, do you know what I mean? And now, if you look at $100 compared to 2021 to now, that $100 back then is probably only worth 80 75 now. So when, when you think about the price of this penthouse that we're in right now, what you what you bought it for compared to what it's worth now, it's, it's gone up over double in price, hasn't it? Yeah, it's double in price, but if you think about it, has it really gone up in double in price or just have they printed so much money that everyone's got more money, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, like, I just think about it like that and that's why I try to tell everyone, like, that's why the big narrative this year is crypto and Bitcoin because it has a fixed supply. Like, no government can print print any more of it. There's only 21 million and that's it. And I've been, pre- I've been telling people since 2015. That's how long I've been, like... Like I got Facebook posts back in the days in 2015 talking about this. Yeah. And sometimes I post it up on my Instagram just to like remind people like I was talking about this back then. Yeah. And um, if I told you this last year, no one would have cared, but everyone's caring now just literally because of the price. But the thing for me is I never look at the price as the only indicator for how well something's going because it's kind of like the last indicator or it just means that that's when the hype comes in and the hype comes in waves. But Actually, if you look at the technology and the the actual Bitcoin in, uh, industry, it's getting bigger and bigger. There's more people building on the space. There's more people entering the space. All the smartest people are in in um, blockchain and artificial intelligence. Well, now they've now they've signed off on the ETFs. Like the price will never go probably near forty grand again because of the constant iteration of you know these these. Uh, family offices now can invest in Bitcoin where they never could before because yeah. they were too exposed. They didn't want to buy and custodially hold Bitcoin themselves. Yeah. They wanted it to be held by a hedge fund or someone like a BlackRock or or, or someone else. So now, now that those hedge funds or those family offices have a route in to get into Bitcoin, there's going to be a constant influx of family offices acquiring it as 5% of their portfolio. Yeah, well, it's not even like about the storage. It's even just the accessibility of it, right? Because if you think about it, even just last year, 
to buy Bitcoin, you had to go try and take money from your bank. They'll probably reject it. You have to figure out how to do it. Then you got to send it to an exchange, you know, hope that it's an exchange that doesn't go down or whatever, and then purchase it. Whereas now you can just buy it like you buy stocks. So, and if you think about it, it's been marketed for at least, what, two cycles now? So like eight years, at least, right? So people have known about this thing for eight years, seeing that the price goes up, especially the year of a halving, right? So it's had marketing for 10 years, but they've had no way to buy it. So it's like literally just in price discovery right now. And now we've got more on-ramps to allow more people to get onto that network. And it is, I suppose, one of the things that you've studied, which potentially the audience hasn't, is network adoption. Exactly. I look at, I look at network adoption and, and I just, you just see it. Like it's faster. It's literally on track with the internet. It's literally on track with the internet adoption. I think it even beats internet adoption. You know, and I always say like people that don't agree with it or, or believe it or can't even comprehend the future because they're only living in the now and that's all they have reference of. But if you think about it, like I'm showing my age right now, but I remember back in 2000s, right? Um, people were scared to put their credit card and buy something online in the, in, the, in the early days. Now it's like, you don't even think about that. You got your Apple Pay, you got everything. So it's once this generation grows older, it's native to them. And I always tell people, look at your kids, look at your, what are they, what is native to them? Try to give your kid money. They want digital currency. They want Roblox money. Do you know what I mean? So digital currency to them is literally the same as fiat. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when they get to 20 years old, when they become in positions of power, even 40 years old, all this digital stuff is just native to them. It's not like, oh, what is this? This is crazy. Like you hear from the older generations, usually with new technologies because they don't keep up or they don't stay ahead or they just stuck in their ways. So, yeah, man. How do you see the adoption curve of things like, you know, we've got these new technologies like Apple Vision and all that's coming out now, and that's taken us more into the metaverse and more into the digital world. Do you think that's been priced into cryptocurrencies and the digital world yet, or do you think that's still waiting to be priced in? Not at all, man. I think that with this Apple Vision in particular, I think about it like this is the first iteration of this technology, right? It's like the big desktop that you had at home. Next will probably be sunglasses, right? That'll be the next iteration. And what could that be? Like the laptop. And then after that will literally be contact lenses that you'll just have in your eyes that will do exactly everything that the Vision Pro does today. Because everyone's looking at it like, that's so weird. You've got this big thing on your face, right? But that's just the first iteration of it. When it gets, you know, a cheaper price and then the scale it and the technology advances, it will literally end up just being contacts, in your eyes so every time a new technology comes in i always think like is there opportunities for me to monetize this you've monetized platforms like facebook in the past for your facebook page other things nfts in the past and everything else you've, you've monetized these at different stages of their adoption yeah if you were looking at apple vision pro now what would you be looking to build on top of that to monetize it so i think about it like this right i think about apple vision pro what is one of the key things that it does, right, is like I believe that teachers will be the new celebrities. And what do I mean by that? I mean like, okay, the best teachers in the world now, where are they? They're in Harvard or they're in one of the top universities, right? But they're still only able to teach to a select amount of people, right? But with these vision pros, you will literally be able to learn, for example, how to work on a Bugatti, right, as a mechanic, you could be in any country in the world, a developing country, learning how to work on a Bugatti with the VR headset. You can literally work on an engine. Whereas think about the accessibility without the VR headset, right? Like you would have had to probably put in 20 years, lived in the country that Bugatti is made in, knew someone, and then maybe you got p- potential, you could get there at the end, right? Now you can start by learning that. You can, it's the same with heart surgery, Everything. So I believe that teachers will become the new celebrity with this sort of technology. It's just going to open up the door to so many different facets that we don't even yet understand. Yeah. I, I heard you mention earlier on in this podcast and the previous podcast that we did and off the podcast, actually, that you always look to where the world's going rather than where the world is. So 
with everyone now looking at Bitcoin because Bitcoin's achieving certain prices and certain we're, we're near a new all time high potentially and all that kind of stuff. Where do you look next beyond that to to be able to go and get some, you know, good price leverage so that whatever you buy goes up in in, in a higher value range? Bitcoin. Still Bitcoin. I still believe in Bitcoin. I still believe that the price today, in 10 years, it just gets bigger and bigger. See, the thing is, like, investing in Bitcoin is like investing in a technology, right? Investing in, in these, like, other other um, cryptos, the altcoins, is like investing in a company. Do you know what I mean? Like, so you're investing in a founder, you're investing in a project. Investing in Bitcoin is like investing in the technology. So... So you don't, you don't take some of the profits that you've made within the Bitcoin sphere or your other spheres where you've, where you've been ahead of the curve and then invest them into any of the altcoins or any of the things beyond that? I do do that, but like the thing is, it all ends up in Bitcoin. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm not taking from Bitcoin to put somewhere else. I'm taking from somewhere else to put into Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, but actually, if you look over it, over a 10-year period, a five-year period, anyone who trades or anyone who does that sort of trading or has that sort of mindset, if they would have just bought and dollar cost average into Bitcoin and just held, that would always be up and it would be like less time consuming. It would be le- less stressful and you could focus on other things that would actually build your skill set up that you could actually make more money in. So what you're essentially saying is focus on creating a cash flow asset that, that brings you that cash flow and then invest, say, 5 10% into Bitcoin, no matter whether it's up, down, left, right, sideways, and then just keep compounding it. I've been telling everyone since like two... Th- at- Okay, my first cycle was like 2015, right? That's when I first started getting into it. But like, I was literally publicly telling it. I was telling friends in like the 2017 run. But then I was publicly telling everyone in like 2020, 2021, dollar cost average and huddle at least five years. That's just like, you just want to be safe, right? Like, if you 3X, 4X, that's that's great. But you hear these stories and news articles about people 100 xing 2000 xing that you think that you can do that and that's how 99 percent of the people lose all of their money yeah because i think what i want people to understand who listen to this is when when a coin a thousand x's the the winners that you're hearing about their exit liquidity on that was someone who's lost a lot of money like in order for them to be able to get out of that coin with a thousand x there's another thousand people over here that have to lose money but that's with any investment though like if you buy a house, if you sell a house, someone paid more than you paid for it. Yeah. So it's with anything. Um, it just means like with the altcoins, right? There becomes a time usually when there's less demand and then that demand kind of never comes back or it never comes back as much. But Bitcoin's shown over the over the years and over the, I think it's like 15 years now um, that it is resilient and it does come back. What about a subsector of crypto though, like crypto gaming as a, as a narrative? Yeah. Yeah, man. So I, I remember telling you in the last cycle that that's what I've been focusing on. So this whole bear market, I've been building like Web3 game for the it's called Trillionaire Thugs with the NFT project. So that's what we're launching. So be, been building through the whole bear market. That's been a crazy experience because even before that, um, in the other cycles, I was more just a, you know, just an investor, just a, just buying coins and, and that sort of stuff, trying to get a few ICOs here and there. But in the last cycle, I actually um, built and building through um, a whole bear market is a whole different experience. Like I think even alluding to your question earlier, like what got my mindset, like as it is right now, is just going through that whole bear market with everyone, everyone like think about all the companies and all the projects, like even the whole NFT space got labeled as like scam, right? The whole space. That's pretty much like if you, if you were said the NFTs, like, People kind of looked at you like that, right? So just dealing with that, um, the, like a whole community, because at the end of the day, there's 1% of the people in NFTs that are actually, I would say, uh, smart investors or investors that understand investing, where like at the end of the day, everything is a risk. You can't predict the, if it's going to be in a bull market, a bear market, whatever, right? So even just dealing with that and still building when most of the other projects like stop building, like that's something that for me is like I carry like I carry with that with pride, you know, because like when we eventually launch in the next few months, it's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be crazy, man. 
and you're launching into a market which can sustain the growth now whereas if you'd launched it in the bear market it couldn't have it couldn't have got off the floor so you so your the people that bought your nfts can't win anyway if in exactly case. exactly so it's like it's kind of like understanding that the sh- you're going to get attacked short term right because 99% of the people in there just want you to try anything just to hopefully something happens, you know, just throw the rocks, see see what happens, you know what I mean? But as a founder and more like on a level one understanding cycle markets and everything and how long stuff takes to get built, right? Like we literally had to build a whole team and infrastructure of like Web3 gaming. And we had a the, a gaming company in Ukraine and then the war broke out. So, you know what I mean? Like, think about that, like, just dealing with that. And that was even like two years ago. So even just being a founder in this space um, during this whole bear market and what happened at the start is like, it's made me resilient as hell, man. Well, a lot of the best developers in the world in, in all forms of software, on whether it's on-chain or off-chain, they're all in the Ukraine. Yeah, like, Ukraine and Russia, man, has like 30, 40% of the, um, of the developers. So as, soon, so as soon as the, the, you know, the war started and... The Russia were cut off from the world in certain respects, trading ways. You know, it made yeah, it made crazy. founders. It made it harder for founders to be able to pay their engineers. It caused a lot of my other friends' problems as well. And you, when you're trying to build something like you're trying to build, and you, and you just have your legs cut off your table, yeah. how how are you meant to put your coffee down? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, it's gonna fall over. Well, you know what, man? Like just going through all of that, man. It just like I'm happy. Like every, every time I go through like all these hard experiences, all this, it just it's a blessing, man. It's literally a blessing because you just come out stronger. You know it's not going to kill you. Like I don't think any. I I think like literally just death will just kill me. But anything other than that, I'm just looking at it as a lesson. One guy I had on the podcast who became a friend of mine is called Luca Nets, and he owns Pudgy Penguins. He bought it for two and a half million um, with a few other investors like Luke Belmar and other people like okay. that. And he was saying to me when he came on the podcast how he was going to take it and scale it and flip board apes and flip this stuff. And obviously yeah. the other day. Well, the other week he he managed to do that with yeah. Pudgy Penguins. Oh, that's mad! And the way he the way he was talking to me about driving traffic reminded me of you because he was talking about how he's driving traffic with Giffies on on um, Instagram and stuff like that, and how he was getting thousands and thousands and thousands of impressions through this, and it was driving traffic. He was creating his own gifts. He was creating his own gifts, mm-hmm. and he got it. He he, he created um, the Pudgy Penguins toys, got it into Walmart and everything like that. Target, so like. Is that side of the thing planned on how you're going to hack the growth on the back of your crypto game as well? Uh, look, man, uh, I, I believe that with gaming, it's a little bit different. Um, so the way that I'll be doing the marketing for the gaming will just be a little bit different. But um, like whatever makes sense, I'll do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the first thing I'll do is just market the, the game and promote that all within the crypto circle, um, viral marketing campaigns through social media, um, build it as, as my brand uh, builds as well. I'll speak about it a lot. and well, Let's talk about some of these viral marketing campaigns because you've got a real deep history in the viral marketing space. I mean, you've even gone as far back as things like the Ice Bucket Challenge. Yeah. You've been invo- involved with sending all that, that viral across the internet um, earlier days with music and obviously you've got a music label as well. So just break down how, because there's a lot of people on here that are going to be listening to you at the start of this podcast going, yeah, I want to grow my personal brand too, Sam, but I can't grow it because of this reason and this reason. They, they've got, thousands of excuses in their head what are the ways that these people could could create like or potentially create viral content so that they can have their own virality first of all i just say just start creating content like just start creating content whatever your skill set is whatever you're best at and whatever you like to do videos in it doesn't matter what it is like just literally create content and then after you've just say you've got 10 15 20 videos right so what what i would do right i would look at other pages who do successfully what I want to do or what I believe I could do. I would research like, you know, the comp- the competitors. I would see what is their biggest viewed videos, what views and what posts has the most comments, likes, shares, all of that. I'll break it all down. Then I'll try to see if there's a f- like famili- familiarities within the viral post that they've done. Then I'll even break that down, right? And then I'll create 10, 15, 20 videos, all different styles, and I'll post it. I'll see what goes good, what, what, what goes bad. Because at the end of the day, there's four things you need to do. You need to make someone like, comment, share, or direct message that to someone. Or even tag someone in a friend. So there's five things. And if you can do as many of those with that post, do you know what I mean? Like you need to try and do as, get the person to do as many of those things 
on every single post. That's li- that's pretty much it. Which one are you most trying to build into the content in terms of like what action are you trying to get out? Well, it, it depends what your brand is. It depends what you're pushing. Like, so for for me with a podcast, would would the would the top engagement thing be getting someone to share it to their friend? Uh, yeah. So this is the thing, right? And this is what I found interesting, and it kind of makes sense, but a lot of people don't understand that. What do you think Instagram is? I'm asking you a question. Do you think Instagram, it's photo sharing, right? It's, it's a photo video app. Actually, 80% of it is direct messages. So 80% of the, use, of the user experience is through direct messages. And I only found that out through watching like a three-hour podcast of the, um, the Instagram CEO. So that's why I say about like all these podcasts, like all the information in the world is there for you to consume. It's just like finding it in the right place. Because even with that knowledge, right, knowing that, 80% of the user experience is through DMs, you can tailor your content. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you got to consume everything. Like, I love Instagram, right? So I'm trying to watch the CEO's interviews, every interview that he does, because he's talking about what they're implementing, what they're trialing, what they're focusing on, right? This is where the advertising spin is coming from. So you know that they're going to give that more reach. Example, Reels. So it's just about getting your knowledge from everywhere and then just like figuring it out. But at the end of the day, it's all about building a personal brand. If What kind of new platform do you see coming along and disturbing the status quo right now? Uh, at the moment, I don't really see any, any platform coming along. Um, I think that even the bigger platforms, like th- this is the thing why it's hard for another platform to actually get traction and, and, and stay there as you've seen with um, TikTok. Well, what did Instagram try to do with the uh, uh, threads? Threads, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, to eat, they even have that big user base and, and it didn't successfully work, right? Because the thing is, is like... That's you, twice they've tried to launch that. They've tried because it's so hard to, to actually start a new, a new thing. Like people have so much already time invested and already amount of hours they've invested in these platforms. So to get them to start something brand new, it's like, it's very hard, especially when these other platforms can just buy you out early and implement that cool feature that you had into the existing platform. Well, I, I tell you how we all know it was an afterthought because they've got threads.net and not threads.com. If, if Facebook can't even own the .com before they launched the, the app, that tells you that it was a complete afterthought and it was never going to work in the first place because no brand like that with articulate thought for launch process like they've had in the past and they've been meticulous with is going to launch on the back of a .net. I know people say, oh, that's not going to make much difference. It does. On perception of the app and whether you take it seriously or not, it does. A dot, a dot com carries the weight, mm-hmm. especially for online user experience. I guess whoever owned that dot com <laughs> saw who wanted to buy it and just put that price up a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, e- but even so, like the, when, you've, when you've paid $18 billion for WhatsApp, which was a great acquisition for them, you know, considering how much it's worth now, you would have thought they'd be acquiring a dot com before they launched something like that. But I think they were just trying to react in that moment to what was happening on with TikTok. X. You know, and try and, Oh, it was even and, with and X, Twitter, right? Twitter, Twitter, yeah. yeah, with X. They were trying to react with X so much and trying to react with um, TikTok on Instagram so much that they were being taken off their clear path. And Instagram's a different is a different beast. They yeah. should just focus on that, I think. Yeah, man. Like I didn't even I haven't even downloaded it. Yeah, I, I set up an account and but what was happening, and, and I even looked into the account the other day, it's like you can have seven or 8,000 followers and even... No one's, even, no one's no, on it. No one's engaging yeah, with it. It's so, because no one's on it. So no one's on it. So, And I, I actually looked at a graph of the, the user base and how much they're engaged on it, and, and it's dropped off by 97% since it launched. It's the same with Clubhouse. You remember Clubhouse? Yep. Like these things have their waves, um, and that's why I don't really like spend too much time investing in it's kind of a platform that I... Like when I really look at it and I break it down before I invest my time even like worrying about it is um, can someone else just copy this feature? Like X, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, do you know what I'm saying? How are you, how are you seeing like, because I've thought for many years that Snapchat was dead, but it turns out with the amount of money that people are making on Snapchat that it isn't dead. So can people be pigeonholed into thinking something's dead just because the new the new kid on the block comes out see sometimes with the new kid on the block what they mean is just literally like the the algorithm is in your favor that you're getting crazy amount of views right but sometimes on the more so-called dying platforms they're throwing money at creators they're throwing money at like pages just to try and get engagement and they're actually giving a better rev share to content creators and each platform has a way that you can monetize and 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 market but each platform 
the content needs to be just a bit different, right? Even this podcast here, you would chop it up different depending on which pl- platform you're posting it on. Even even if you post it on stories as comp- as opposed to reels on Instagram, you know what I mean? Like you, you would, have have you would change narrative. the format as well. So even inside the certain app, and this is what people don't understand. They just, they just think it's all about creating content, right? But that's why I tell them just create content because this is the only stuff that you figure out after you've been doing it. Do you know what I mean? Like you know stuff now that you didn't know in year one doing podcasting. It's only because you've been doing it for X amount of years that you know it. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of hacks that I've learned along this path that I'm still trying to implement myself. So like until I've implemented them myself, I don't release them to to, to people because I, you know you want you want to get first movers advantage on some of the stuff that you know because yeah. you've put in so many reps to learn that learn that game to yeah. even do it to give it to give it away is kind of a bit of a lost battle before you've implemented it yourself but i just see if anyone's out there listening like the the, the best thing that i can see in the marketplace right now is facebook pages facebook pages if, if you commit to posting on them however you want to post on them that you, you're getting mad reach on that and that will help any of you that have a brand reach more people and people are overlooking the facebook page just because it's old there's still a lot of eyeballs on facebook and then even now um because they understand that they they're not what they were that they're investing and giving back a lot more to the creators yeah so it's clear to me and it's clear to many people watching this podcast on youtube that you use fashion in a way that not many people would even dare use it like you're 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 dripped out head to toe in in beautiful jewelry you've got the sunglasses on you've got the mink jacket um talk to me about why why and how you use fashion to open doors first of all like it's my passion i love fashion but then, like, it's with anything that I do. I always try to figure out how I can kill as many birds with the one stone as possible. Doesn't matter if I'm going to the gym. Doesn't matter if whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to kill as many birds with the one stone. And that is the pure way how to get wealthy, right? They tell you that you don't get rich off one job, right? So it's the same thing in life. It's not just about how much money you make. It's about how, like, how fine-tuned your process is, right? So if I'm into fashion, Cool. But then I want to build the relationships with the brands. So then i got good relationships with them because they all have different events throughout the year. They have fashion shows in Milan. They have fashion shows in Paris. Now, I know that if I go to these fashion shows, the other type of people that I'm going to be hanging around with is business opportunities, is potential to network, is potential to build relationships. And you've got to think about it. There's people... There's top clients from Asia, top clients from the Middle East, top clients from America, all over the world, all converging into Paris and Milan, and they all have the, you know, the passion for fashion. So a lot of these people are successful business people as well. So it's, it's just like that, man. It's just literally building the networks inside that. And then also with fashion as well, it's like, I just love it, man. Like, I, I love pulling on a, a like a, like this, a coat, you know what I mean? Like, a mink coat, a Sherling coat, and just looking crazy, man. Like, I always try to be on point, and that's it. Walk me through the purchase of this jacket that you're wearing right now. Is that is that a piece that goes up in value over time? Uh, so, look, this man, I I got this. The reason I got this one in particular was because I went to the Fendi fashion show in Milan. And, you know, I just try to choose a few, a few things from the shows that I go to as kind of like mementos, right? It's like a postcard <laughs> you know, back in the days, you'd get a postcard. Well, I'm trying to get the mink coat or the crocodile bag from the shows just as mementos. Now, this one here, I wouldn't say it would really go up in value. But the thing with this is, like, I can pull this out in 10 years. I can pull this out in 15 years, and I'm still going to rock it, and it's still going to be a crazy, like, Peace, bendy yeah. coat. You know what I mean? So I look at it more like that is how long is this going to last? That's why now I mostly just focus on, like, exotics or, like, crazy pieces that's, like, you can pull out in five years, you can pull out in six years and you're still going to get the use out of it. And then it's up to you because, you know, at the end of the day, it's like what we said, your impression, first impressions is like so, so impactful, you know, like I, I go to places and, and people remember me just literally because of what I was wearing or because of how I looked the first time they met me. Um, and that's what you want. Why? Because it just makes your job easier. It makes life easier. Like, think about it like that, right? It's about killing as many birds with the, as the one stone as possible. It's about being memorable. And that's what I always try to be. Like, I always want to be memorable. Because even when I talk, I know that people have, they'll look at me in a certain way. Like, oh, he looks like this. Or he must think like that. You know, it's stereotypical. But 
when they actually hear me speak, they hear me talk about business, they hear me talk about life, they hear me talk about my mindset, where I'm going in life, how focused I am. They're like, damn, like, I didn't, damn, uh, I didn't think it was going to be like that. I thought he was going to try to bust some raps or something and try to get a record deal or something. You know what I mean? Like, is, is, is that because people always put a stereotype on you just because of like where you've come from originally? I think, I think it's just normal, man. Like everyone has a stereotype, no matter where you're from, no matter what you look like. Um, doesn't matter you're white, black, brown. Uh, everyone has a stereotype. Do you know what I mean? Like there's stereotypes for every single different type of person that you could think of. So it's just understanding that and just dealing with it and just not even allowing that to be a factor. What, what's your kind of fashion advice for people that want to unlock the door to the kind of network? They want to stand out in the way that you're talking about, but don't particularly have the funds to go and buy the Fendi jacket right now. Okay, cool, man. So like at the end of the day, like just if you're into fashion, right, but you don't have the money, go to, where the, go to like where the creatives are. Try to find that entry level brand that's like just starting out, you know, like that's that the CEO is doing 10 jobs and just try to make yourself useful. Like, you know, pick up a camera. I don't know, whatever your skill set is, just show value and just try to learn everything. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd go about it like that. And then, and then from there, you're shooting this content and then they might give you a few pieces. But like you say, if you build a personal brand on Instagram as well, sometimes people will offer to send you pieces. I mean, even I, me, I'm not, I'm nowhere near as fashionable guy like you, obviously, because I'm just a, I'm a plain black tea kind of guy. But at the end of the day, I still get brands reaching out to me all the time, wanting to send me clothing, send me fitness stuff, send me this because I'm building a brand on the internet. So yeah. once you start to understand Sam's mentality on building that personal brand and putting your face out there, then people start to offer you the opportunities. So it's all about creating opportunities. Yeah, man. And you just got to understand like what level you're at, right? Like if I've only got a thousand followers, I'm not going to try and hit up someone that has a million followers, right? I'm going to stick to other people that's doing things that show motivation. And it's up to you to be able to decipher like who's hungry, who's climbing. Like, is this his peak or is he just starting? Do you know what I mean? And then it's like deciphering like who's the best out of the thousand followers that you can connect with. And then you utilize their, con their, their following and their connects to get to 1,500 followers. And then you network with the people that have 50. It's literally like that. It's literally levels and levels and levels. This is like a real life game. That's why, I to be honest with you, I really don't play games. I, I, I haven't had a PlayStation console since, I think, the first PlayStation. So I don't play games, man. Like, I just realized that the game of life is so much more important. The high scores is like real high scores that you can take out of the game. And it's literally like, it helps your whole life. So I just focus on getting the high score in life. When I think about how me and you have met, become friends, developed our relationship over time and how that happened. When I first came to Australia, obviously I came there as a carpenter and joiner. Yeah. I had to find a skill that bridged the gap that could allow me to, the free cash flow to be able to build online, start building a personal brand. And then obviously build that relationship with you through Instagram and stuff like that for, back in the day, yeah. asking advice in 15, 16, 17 about Bitcoin and stuff on yeah. the stories. Then you obviously watch me build a personal brand and then we build a connect because now I can add value to you yeah. by bringing you some audience. And yeah. then and then obviously you can bring me, me a lot yeah. of value because you can add value to my audience. Yeah. And that's how we've done it. Quick one for you guys. This podcast is sponsored by contentremover.com. As many of you are probably aware, I set up contentremover.com in 2017 to help people remove all forms of online content. And I've looked after some of the biggest names and brands in the world doing it. And I would love to help you if you're struggling. If you're struggling to remove images, videos, search results, fake accounts, or anything online, go to contentremover.com and we'll help you today. Well, the reason I'm saying all that and how, and how long of a trajectory that was for me and you to develop this relationship, which has been like seven or eight years now, the reason I want to tell people that on this podcast is because most people go, okay, I want to talk to Sam I'm working in a factory in Logan or I'm doing this in Leeds in England. Oh, I just want to talk to him. I'm like, well, that's not how it happened for me. And it's not how it's going to happen to you with any high value person. Exactly. I think when people understand that it unlocks a lot more doors because there's a process to it and don't underestimate the value of compounding the process over time. Like you said, exactly. So give me some of the instances in life where you've seen in your reality where compounding has unlocked all the doors. It's just literally exactly what you said. Like the same reference that you use, I, I, I can like name hundreds of cases like that where I have relationships with certain people that I've built, that I still nurture, that I still like take care of, that I've never even asked for a favor, that I might not even ever ask for a favor. 
um, do you know why? Because it's not the right time to ask them for a favor or it's not the right thing to ask them for a favor on. Whereas this is the one of the worst things I see with most people, right? Is as soon as they meet someone, they just think, how can they take, take, take? No, man. Think about it, right? Every successful person is getting asked from a thousand people, give me, give me, give me. Can you help me here? Can you do this for me? The one person that stands out is the person that's offering value, right? Out of all of those thousand people that's asking, the one person that's offering to give is the one that I'm going to reply to. So it's like that. And that's how you build your relationship, man. Can you give me an example of how someone's added value to your life recently so that and, and you know, unlock some value from you giving back to them as a byproduct of that? Yeah, man. For example, right? When I came back from South America, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just go crazy. I'm going to double down on building my personal brand, building my relationships. And like I said, just putting the business first, putting business first, putting success first. And um, actually... I did a, just did a post saying any people that create content want to link up, get at me. And from there, like a couple people did. And one of the relationships that I built is with a company called Third Core. And their founder, his name's Essa. He's a, a local Emirati. Man, like he's literally just been helping me out so much, filming my content. And, and you know, in return, I've kind of been big brothering him. You know what I mean? Like just mentoring him. So I know that if I was to pay him um, for his things, I probably wouldn't have made that I wouldn't have made that money I wouldn't have done it you know what I mean because I, I wouldn't have seen the value in paying his in, in that amount um, and then but the fact that we're able to I'm able to mentor him in that and then he saw the value in, in that you know that, that trade yeah. that transaction like that it's it, it makes sense man and like he even flew to um, France to come and film in Paris man so yeah man it, it's, it's funny you say that because I get a lot of video editors message me all the time wanting to, they say, hey, can I send you a short? Rather than saying, hey, can I send you a short? Why don't you send me one? Like, do you know what I mean? Just yeah. just, just create a piece of content and yeah. send it to you. And you know what it is, man? It's like, I get that as well. And these people, they're just trying to open a uh, conversation. It's very like cheap sales tactics, right? It's to get you to open the, con- you see it, the girl there with like half a million followers that's got Forex trader or whatever. And she's she's messaging, but it's just literally a dude running it it's all fake followers, this whole thing, and they're just trying to get you, some sort of service it's, it's out of it. It's the honeypot profile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like they try, they, they run them on LinkedIn as well. They they create honeypot profiles. They they run them. They talk to CEOs, try and get business as yeah. if as if there's they're talking to like these real you know Brazilian hottie or whatever. <laughs> it's just it's just a crazy it's a crazy yeah, way. But people, you, you, you'd be surprised how many people interact with these accounts. I know someone from the UK that was running these accounts was doing mega business off the back of them. Yeah, man. Sometimes I see, so, like, it's so obvious that it's one of those pages and then you see mutual friends and you see a couple of your friends are like, oh, damn, like, feel bad for them. <laughs> and, 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 and when they're liking the photos and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, My boy's getting scammed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Like, yeah. every, every, every week you kind of you kind of see this happening in the, in, the, in the marketplace. Wi-Fi money. Let's talk about Wi-Fi money and, and what that whole concept is to you yeah, and man. how people can get theirs. So pretty much Wi-Fi money, man, like the, the name is like self-explanatory, right? It's just like internet money. Now, pretty much every way that I've made money or even like running the nightclubs in, back in the days, right? I utilize social media. Like, so everything that I've done, I've utilized the internet for marketing. So my whole journey, man, and this is over like 20 years, I've literally used social media. And I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but also like it took me that long. It took me 250 million downloads on apps it took me being the number one facebook page it took me you know when i say i posted a meme and i got a million likes back in 2014 and like every time i'd post a meme i would literally get a million likes like the skill the the knowledge that you get from that like it just seems like it's easy but you literally have to know what to post and everything like there is just so much other stuff that comes with that that you only learn over time so with the wi-fi money i'm like you know what so many people have messaged me throughout my whole career. So, like I said, because I have posted everything online, a lot of people have seen my journey. You know what I mean? Like, there's been a lot of people that have literally followed me the whole way through from doing music, even, like, gym videos. Like, 14 years ago, I got gym videos online. Like Rap uh, videos, too. Rap videos, like, you know, just everything. Um, And they've seen where I'm at now. So, they've seen the journey. So, I've literally been messaged so much. Can you mentor me? Can you... And then I understood that 
you know what? This is literally philanthropic work. You know what I mean? Like this is literally giving back because everything I do in my life, bro, like I'm going on, on a tangent right now, but it makes sense at the end. But everything that I do in my life, like I literally have like a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan. And right now, if I'm not doing what I'm focusing on now, I'm not going to get to the five-year plan, which is means that I'm not going to get to the 10-year plan, which means I'm not going to get to the 20-year plan. And later on in my life, like I literally want to figure out ways to distribute everything I've earned and everything I've got that's literally going to be like legacy type shit. So right now it's like accumulation phase, but I still want to give back. So I believe that the most impactful way to do it right now is to get people who want to learn and get mentored by me because the people that I'm going to mentor, they're pretty much going to be like high level salary people or entrepreneurs. And throughout my whole journey, I've been big brother to so many different people, musicians, athletes, so many different types of people like you like influences everything i've helped them make money of like giving so much life advice that this is kind of like my give back but it also needs to be a business because the, the most people who's going to listen to you or you're going to listen or you're going to study is when you got skin in the game if you got no skin in the game you're not really going to focus so you're kind of wasting my time and you're wasting your time so i believe that with this here and what I've created, I'm able to scale it. So it's just the perfect thing to be able to give back. But also, it also holds me accountable as well to know that I'm going to have people that's literally, you know, getting mentored by me is going to hold me accountable as well. So it's, I just see it as a crazy positive loop and it's just going to take me to the next level. And everyone else in my circle is going to go to the next level because I only hang around successful people. How much do you want to accumulate? You mentioned you had an accumulation goal. Like, what what's the accumulation goal for you? It's just like, it's just about doing like living your lifestyle. Because actually, at the end of the day, my main thing is lifestyle. It's not just about money, right? But when I say accumulation, I mean this is the time to create businesses. This is the time to to do all of that sort of stuff. But it's just I know that if we're talking about a dollar amount, like I don't know, man. I guess you just start getting respect if you got that billionaire by your name. Right. And to be like the first kind of like Islander in that to 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 do that will be kind of cool. How many years off do you reckon billionaire status you are? Um, it just it just depends, bro. Like uh, like I only focus on industries or I only stay in industries where that could happen next year or you know what I mean? Like it has the possibility to happen off one project or off one, you know, home run type thing. So that's the thing that like, that's why I'm always in future technologies. That's why I'm always focused on future trends because that has the most upside. That's where you can hit a home run and get that, get that type of money. So that's even one thing that I always tell people that I'm mentoring as well is like, understand that what you do, what is the ceiling? So you, you're essentially saying, check that if you, if, if check what boat you're in right now and see if the boat that you're in can be rowed to the level you want to row it to. Yeah, or even just row it to the level that you know is like kind of like the limit, but understand that that is the limit so while you're rowing it, figure out what's your next what's your next route. You know what I mean? Why you take like, bro? You don't ride a wave. Like for me, I don't be riding a. Uh, if I'm surfing, right, using that analogy, I'm not gonna surf and ride it all the way back to the shore. I'm not gonna catch it when it's like about to crash. Right, I'm gonna go out and look for my own the, the next wave. Same thing. Who do you see at the moment in the marketplace that's putting out content that is creating so much virality? that you know there's so much monetization on the back of that for them? Andrew Tate. Like that dude's, that dude's like literally got this whole thing. Like that, that guy's a genius. Break down his marketing thesis from your, from you looking at it from a, from a, cause you've obviously had these pages with 14, 15 million fans and them are making a bulk amount of cash. So you, can you give me a high level breakdown of what he's doing exactly? Yeah, look, I'm not going to give you a high level breakdown of specifically what he does, but I, I understand it and I, I kind of got a good overview of what he does. But this is what I'll tell people, right? Because this is the actual knowledge that, that will help people is figure out how to go viral and have a monetization strategy off that. That's pretty much it. Don't worry about what someone else did in the past. Don't worry about what someone has done because you're only going to do a watered down version of that, right? He's already done it. Someone else has already done that. All you need to understand and figure out is how to go globally viral and how to monetize that. That's it. That's literally it. So every time, whether it's virality for an artist, whether it's virality for a game, whether it's virality for 
an NFT project, you break it down from an individual level with a, is it, is it using the same framework? Everything, like everything is the same, right? It's like, okay, put it like an architecture, right? I guess the same principles apply no matter what project you're building, right? If you're building like a, a, a castle, like a house or a big building, I guess there's some principles that apl- apply, but then there's also variations and unique factors to each, each plan as well. Can you, same can, you, can you give me a bare bones framework of how you do it? Okay, give me, give me something for example. Let's, let's say you wanted to send this podcast viral on social media. Okay, so if I wanted to send this podcast viral, right, I would literally sit down and watch the whole podcast. I would see what is the most viral topics that we're talking about. I would cut that up, right? Then I would look at the, where's the, what traffic do you have that's the most of? Uh, Instagram, YouTube, and and yeah, Instagram, Instagram, and YouTube shorts. Okay, so then you would just literally cut it up like that, what for whatever content you wanted on. Then you will just ca- you just need to make sure that the caption's right and the thumbnail's on point. From there, it's, it's like de- it depends on everything else whether it goes, but like those are the principles for this thing here. And then the thing is, you just at the end of the day, you don't really know, right? But there's certain rules that apply. And you know what it is, man. Like, cut the clickbait up, caption it. A lot of people don't have the sound on. So captions is very important as well. Let's let's talk about physical products because a lot of physical products are being sold now off the back of TikTok shop from the virality of clips. And what I've noticed from that is, and what I want this audience to notice is the fact of like, some of the viral clips aren't of the product. They're viral clips that in the comment or the, or the caption yeah. sell a different product. Yeah. Have you seen that strategy work at a high level? Yeah, for man, a I, did that in, I did that in like 2013. So like you just literally have a product that you're selling and you just have viral videos going out and you just top comment the product that's popping off the most. You just put it in top comment, pin post it, boom. And when, and when you do that, are you affiliate selling the product? Or are you sending it directly to your own shop? It depends what it depends what the product is, how you want to do it. Like at the end of the day, it depends like what makes sense. Is this see, this is what people need to understand as well when they have an online business. Like people literally think that this is the new normal, but no, it's just it just works now. So you need to capitalize capitalize off it as much as you can. Now, if you see a product that can be easily copied, you know it's just a quick wave, right? So just quickly monetize it and move on like look for the next wave but if you think that you can build a brand off it you can put your label on it you can build some infrastructure you can build an office you can have like a physical location that people can come to and experience the product or whatever then that's different so it just, it literally just depends on what the product is and what makes the most sense with what your assets are and everything that you have you've been in dubai now for i think over five years yeah, obviously man. you've got a beautiful place here but it's been for eight years is it, is this going to be the is this going to be your forever place or are you or are you thinking about pivoting? I know you've been over in South America a lot, looking over there, looking at the market over there, seeing what's happened over there. Yeah. So give me a, give me a bit of a broad strokes overview of where you think people should be looking to position themselves in the world to be able to capitalize on the opportunities. Well, I think the main thing is is like either earn in, in Bitcoin or US dollars. From there, okay, because US dollars is the most stable currency, and that's why I like Dubai as well because it's pegged to the US dollar. Right, so it's kind of like investing in in America, without the taxes and everything, because it's literally pegged to the U.S. dollar, three point six seven dirhams. It always equals one U.S. dollar, so it's very safe in in that regard. You're not you're not um, held by by currency fluctuations from like a, a developing nation or something. Um, but then also like I like thinking global. You know what I mean. So once you earn in U.S. dollars or Bitcoin, now you can look at lifestyle. Where, where does your dollar go the furthest, right? Um, and then you just tailor it to your lifestyle. But the thing is why I like traveling is because, for example, I go to, Colum- I go to Colombia and Medellin, right? And I'm like, damn, this is three and a half hours away from Miami, five hours away from New York. So that means you're always going to get American tourists coming, right? The climate is amazing year round. Um, and then you just start seeing opportunities in different ways that, people don't see because they just stay in their one um their one their one geographical location and that's why even for me for me to open up a physical business it's like it's got to tick a lot of boxes because i like the flexibility of just being able to travel anywhere in the world and just have digital products or digital services this is why you always 
from what I can see, collaborate with other people on the deal. So you'll bring the marketing element, the virality. You might bring some artists, some connect work, network to the game. And then someone else will bring, um, they might bring 10 staff who can build on the back end. They might bring yeah. other asset. I know you work with people, a lot of people in Miami, for argument's sake, where you've got, they bring something, you bring something. Yep. Is that now how you encourage everyone to do business rather than go in and build in something now where they have to go and build an office with 10 staff, for argument's sake? I just believe like, you just never had to do that, right? And it's just like, now people are actually understanding that you don't need to do that. Like, when people say, where's your office? I'm like, I don't have an office. But when they say, how many staff do you have? Well, I got one in Kosovo. I got this guy here. I got that guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, I got team everywhere. So, and then you, you're literally hiring the best people. And then even if you get someone in Kosovo, for example, right? But I'm paying him US wages. Now I'm paying him 40% more than he makes in Kosovo. So I'm paying him a very good wage. And I'm getting someone who works twice as hard and is going to work, you know what I mean? Twice as good. So it's just like, there's just too many benefits from like, just thinking globally. When when you set up companies, are you, are you obviously your main company and all your main stuff is held here, but do you base, your, do, you, do you set up LLCs in, in say America for argument's sake, or are you doing limited companies in London or what, what how are you, how are you no, Everything's here because like everything's digital. So every, you run everything for a company in, in based in Dubai. Because a lot of people are worried about getting money locked up here, all that kind of stuff. The banking system's not as good as perhaps the Western world. So how are you managing all that? Man, I just believe like you should just always spread your money out in different geographical locations, have different bank accounts in different different geographical locations, um, have different passports, like try to have two passports and just think like that. How many? So have you only got two passports, or are you trying to actively get more citizenships, or what? What's like I'll just keep, I will just keep going. Where, where? What are the places you're looking to get passports? In now? Um, it kind of depends on on where I'm treated the best. You know what I mean? Um, or what offers they offering for for what I have? Or because some people, some countries, they offer citizenship by investment. Others offer like residency, and then it can lead to citizenship. Um, so it just depends. Can you ever see yourself returning to Australia? Because you've got a beautiful place over there. And um, I don't know if you still got it, but I remember last yeah, time you had one. Still got it. Look, to be honest with you, I kind of like, when I came to Dubai in 2016, I just saw so much potential out here. And I kind of looked at it as like, it kind of reminded me of New York in the early, I don't know if it was like 1800s or whatever, when, you know, when everyone came from different parts of the world trying to chase a better life. They all came. They all went to New York. You had like people from Germany, from you know England, Irish, all of those type of places, all converging in um in New York, and that's what's happening to Dubai now. You're getting like literally, like it's you go outside and you talk to ten different people. They're from ten different places, and the one thing that they all have in common is they all want to get to the next level. Do you know what I mean? So you're getting the best. Like look at the architecture here. Like. You you can't even come with a normal project. Like you gotta you gotta come crazy or else you're not even gonna get approved. So it just keeps pushing, keeps pushing it. And to be honest, like this keeps inspiring me to just keep going to the next level, man. Do you see a shift in it going from Dubai to Saudi? Because Saudi's obviously coming up there competing now. Uh I believe that like um Dubai has like done what they've done for so long that even if another place started to go down that route, they're kinda like 20 years ahead or whatever in what they do that they would always have an advantage of what they do but if you think about it the different um, neighbouring regions in the GCC they're all kind of like attracting a different type of crowd or specialising in a different type of thing with like Abu Dhabi for example they're more focused on like arts and that sort of stuff whereas Dubai is known as the the, the destination place you know what I mean so I, I think they're all trying to do different things it was interesting because I saw on the story a few months back you uh, you were here with Lucas Mack doing some breath work. Yeah, obviously I've done breath work with Lucas. I've had him on the podcast. Great guy. How have you used breath work to unlock new levels of self? Oh damn, man! Like doing that breath work with him was crazy because people don't really understand like how limited of percentage of the breath you actually do when just normal living, right? And actually how much it takes out of you and just like it's like a literally like a natural high, so it's it's great, man. I love doing that. It's just like 
for me, I, I, I kind of look at it as the same as doing the gratitude in the morning. As long as you have your 10 minutes, 15 minutes of, of that every day where you're just like, you're thankful for where you are and then you're focused on where you're going. I think that like whatever, whatever you use that benefits you is, is great. You seem like the type of man that's not just working, working, working. Someone who's, who's actively spending a lot of time just sat there in silence thinking. Am I right in, in that thought process? Bro, I'm always like, even right now, I'll be thinking of like five, six different things. Like, I don't know, I've just always been like that since I was young. So no matter where I am, I'm literally having like four different conversations. I'm analyzing different things in my head. Um, I've always been like that. So even like, that's even like why I love running. I actually love running. And like, it's like I said, right, I try to kill as many birds with the one stone. So that's why I love running out in the sun. Like I'll be hitting the sun. I'll be getting that vitamin D. I'll be running. So I'll be like pushing myself. And then I've got the podcast going on. You know what I mean? Like I'm just doing too many things yeah. at once. It's like, that's why I can do eight kilometers, 10 kilometers every day. And that's just to get you into the right mind to be able to give you clarity of thought on which projects and which things you should follow and which things you shouldn't. Yeah. Even like, even for example, right. Um, there's been so many times in, in, biz, in launching businesses that I've literally went all the way to like the physical product is done. Like I'm about to ship it out. Then you pull the plug. You know what I mean? Like, so you just, you just, you just go all that way that all that process and then you might pull the plug. But it's about understanding that like sometimes you cut, cut your losses because you, you, you realize that actually this could work, right? And it probably will work. But is it the best opportunity or is this going to take all my time up? Is this going to take 20 hours out of 24 hours out of the day that I'm not even going to have any other time to like get something that I know could be a hundred times bigger and then I'll just pull the plug on that. So that's why I love thinking about that sort of stuff. And, you know, I'm blessed that I kind of really, I don't need to chase money. I don't need to chase money tomorrow. You know what I mean? I can do plays now that could get me paid in three years, four years. So, so your that. suggestion is then to create a cash flow business online that allows you the freedom of time, that allows you freedom of location, that allows you enough cash flow to give you the time to think. And then once you have enough time to think and you stood there at the crease with the bat ready to swing the bat, it's about knowing what opportunity to hit out the park and only go for the one where you can hit the 100x on potentially rather than, rather than hitting the one you go for 10, 5, 10, 5. I feel like when I see so many people like try to focus on like so many different things, um, especially when it comes to money, right? Um, they chase a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there, a hundred dollars there that actually, if you just sat down and, and, and just thought about it in a more strategic way, I guarantee you that you could just walk over here and get $10,000. You know what I mean? But you're just chasing all this $20, $50 that you're seeing on the ground that you don't even realize that, hold up, if I just plan a little bit better, be a bit more strategic, there's $10,000 over there. And you know what I mean? It's kind of like you got to go outside of your own body and look at it from an outside perspective because you know that if you give advice to someone, it's kind of not, it's usually sometimes not the advice that you give to yourself, right? It's only when you're on the outside looking in that you're not looking at the situation with any emotion that you just plot properly. This is A, this is B, this is the most efficient, effective route to get there. Yeah. yeah. It, it literally is, like you're saying, a conversation with yourself and a, and a plan of attack on, a, on an A4 piece of paper that can save you hours and hours of time. Or like it can, like think about it, right? Um, everyone says they got an idea, they got an idea, I got this, I got that. But, you know, you can literally go on Google and type million dollar ideas. Like there's 10,000 for free. I mean, I've literally got $10,000 million ideas in my head. Why don't I execute on all of them? Because it's about the team and it's about how quick or how efficiently is that million dollars going to come. Do you know what I mean? And those are variable factors in every single million dollar idea. So that's why it just rules a lot of them out because it's either you don't have the team or it's too, it's going to take too long to get that million dollars. So, Or if you make a million dollars out of it, it'll cost you $900,000 to ship it, handle it, do whatever you got to do with it, market it. That, that, then you're not, there's a lot of people that I see with these click funnel awards on the, on the back behind them, right on their, on their YouTube videos. Yeah. And that's, 
those click funnels award are given out on revenue. Yeah. They're not given out on profit. Yeah. They're given out on revenue. So you turn over a million dollars. Well, yeah, great. But if your margin is 20, 30 percent, exactly. We talk we're only talking two or three hundred grand. Exactly. You can make two or three hundred grand with a consulting business at a ninety percent profit margin. You've just made as much money as someone who's done a million dollars. Exactly. So it's like it not all boats that you're in are are, are created equal. And I really want people to understand what you've just said there because yeah. you, you're saying that you can have 79 different million dollar ideas, but not every million dollars is the same. Yeah. Bro, right. like at the end of the day, right? It's not about how much money you made. It's not about the revenue. It's about the profit. Yeah. Right? Like how much did you actually make? Yeah. That's kind of all that matters. And that's why I always tell people like digital service for me um, or digital product has the most upside potential. And then your other side of that is building a brand where you get eyeballs for free. At the end of the day, you got to figure out how to, you are going to generate attention, right? The cheapest way possible, the most effective way possible. How am I going to get seen by a thousand people? Because think about it, right? I used to run nightclubs. And even on a local level, I always had an advantage because why? I'm seeing 500 different people every Friday and Saturday. And not only that, they're having a drink or two. So they're a bit loose. Conversations are flowing. Business is getting done. Relationships are being built. Now, this is just on a whole different level with social media. You can literally have a million views on a video. Do you know what I mean? Like, think about the power of that. Like, literally a million people saw what you said. So that's why I say, man, create content, build a brand. And exactly what you alluded to, right? You can be a a worker who is a number B that can literally make the same amount of money as an owner. And you're going to have less stress and more time to make other money. Do you know what I mean? So it's like every situation is very individual. And this is another reason why the mentorship thing for me is, 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 is important because I just got this weird like ability. And I think it's just from like, it's all I focus on. So it's like, I've just fine tuned this is like someone can talk to me for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I will just like fine tune their whole approach to life. Like literally just how to just do everything more effectively. Let's talk about your approach to health because obviously people don't understand how in shape you are and how that's that is the north star for you. I feel yeah with everything you do, it's yeah. all about shape. You, I've never seen you out of shape. I've been out of shape, I've, but I've never seen you out of yeah. shape. Um, so the thing is, the thing is with that is like I feel like I just got rich, so I could just train every day. I promise you, like it's literally my first passion. Like I'm one of those guys that had the Arnold Schwarzenegger encyclopedia of bodybuilding at my house, you know, like you were mad. You, you, you were a big guy when you were bodybuilding. Yeah. Like I wrote my stats on the thing and everything, you know, like age 15 weight, arm size, all of that, man. Like I was so into it. Um, so it's actually my first passion and you know, it just taught me a lot. It taught me discipline. It taught me sacrifice. It, it, it taught me that you got to put in the work now to get the results tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? So, but what I also realized, and this is why I say like I'm very effective with everything that I do is I quickly saw that there's no real money in this in doing this, right? So you just literally need to take the positives out of that and move on because you don't want to be like my age still just in the gym, you know, like worrying about that. That should just be one facet of your game. I remember a conversation on Instagram years ago between me and you and I, I saw that you were taking weight off. Now, I've been one of these people that's never wanted to put loads of weight on. I always like to just stay trim, lean, ripped as possible, lean and mean, because I believe it helps me think better. Yeah. When I saw you taking weight off, I said to you, why why are you you taking weight off, Sam? Like, what's the thing? You've been building this body for years, and you told me that you'd reinvented yourself because you wanted to look better in fashion, and you wanted to open more doors that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you, you said, like, I've built, I'm happy to tear down what I've built to build something better, were your words to me. To be honest, I didn't even look at it as like tearing something down. I just look at it as like, bro, just I'm just chiseling the marble. You know what I mean? Like I'm just chiseling some certain bits off, you know, the sculpture and just. But you must have took off like twenty kilos, twenty kilos, twenty five kilos of muscle over a period over a period of years. Nah, it was about 10, 10 kilos. But um, look, you know what? You know when like when I was young, the look was just that bodybuilder look, and um, even I remember when I used to train when I was at school, people used to tell me but what are you training for? It was never just, I just train. It was like, but what are you training for? Like what sport? I'm just training. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like now it's just a, a, a normal thing. And I think it was running as well. And also like, 
yeah, just just knowing that that image, that 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 size, it doesn't look good in like designer clothes. <laughs> and I suppose, I suppose as well that that image shut doors for you in business as well because you potentially were, had the more intimidating type look in business rather than rather than how you move now. Um, yeah, I would just more so like I guess so, but I guess the main thing for me was like you said, like you just feel lighter, you move better, you're not sluggish. Like I prefer to be like on the athlete vibes than that. Bodybuilder vibes, but, you know. But I mean? many people from the island, from the island culture, islander culture, they they want to be as big as possible. They want to be, they want to be like stacked. Yeah, you know, that that is that is what you're brought up in. Yeah. So, so I want people to understand how you've had to even reinvent your mindset to how you've been brought up in that to get through that. Cause yeah. That, that's well, like, completely counterintuitive. Yeah. Well, it? like for islanders, like we eat a lot, we eat a lot, and um, we love food. Like, and everything's about family. So think about it, right? What brings family together is always food. So our culture is we eat a lot, we eat a lot, we consume a lot, and then also we're just big people. We're just physical people, man. Like, like islanders are like literally physical people. Like they used to go to different islands and just like, war, it was just war, you know. So like genetically strong people, and um, we like being big. We like being big, but um, yeah, man, it's just like what makes sense. You know what I mean? Like what makes sense for you and what makes sense for your journey, and this is what makes sense for me. Is like it's about staying lean. It's about being on point. And the way I look at it is like, stay ready so you don't need to get ready. Because there's always opportunities, right? But you don't want to be telling the guy, oh, can we do it next week? I need, I need to like lose a little bit of weight or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's just anything in life. It's like, you just stay ready so you don't need to get ready. That's it. What are your key tips and advice for people to get ready right now? So is, it, is the first thing they get in on the back of this podcast, getting their fitness right and getting their health dialed in? Yeah, man. I just say, like, first of all, just don't hang around with losers, man. Like, hang around with people that when there's a prob- problem, they're the ones that comes up with the solutions, right? If you encounter a problem and you're crying about it or complaining about it or, like, it's literally breaking you down and you're acting like weird, don't hang around these type of people. First of all, change your friends. Change your friends and then get your ass to the gym. Get your ass to the gym. Get running. Stay tr- training. Push yourself. Like the human body is capable of so much. But now in 2024, we lose such a lazy lifestyle. Like we don't even need to go outside of our house to to live. You know, like we can call uh, deliveries, everything. We can call the doctor, especially living in Dubai. You know what I mean? So you got to push yourself because when I read a stat back in the days that humans on average walk like 20 kilometers a day, I'm like, I've at least got to do that. You know what I mean? That's why I run like 10 kilometers every day. I'm like, man, my ancestors did this. You know what I mean? Like when you push yourself to the limit and you encounter that every single day, you encounter that breaking point. It just keeps you on point. Like when you go through that every day, like bro, it's not, it's not one day that my body's not just in pain. Like my whole body's in pain of just training so hard. And then I just try to stretch and then I just go for the 10K run. But like, it's not, there's not once that I'm like, I feel like fainting. I feel like dying, but I know I'm not going to die. I know at the end of the day, I'm going to be sleeping on my bed and I'm actually going to have the best sleep because I did what I did today and I'm going to be stronger. And that's why like, that's why I have this strong mindset, man. That's why I have this strong thing is because I push myself every single day. I experience discomfort every single day. One of the things I feel like you've experienced more than more than most I've encountered, or even as much as all the other successful people I've encountered in life, is the power of compound growth over a long period of time. I think your strength is the fact of like you're not listening to any naysayers at the time or any negative comments or anything that people try and put you down. Yeah, you just you just set a plan. It's normally five years. And you just keep compounding and doing the reps towards that plan and you make that happen and then you move on to something else once that's happened. Yeah, man, like, bro, like, it's just crazy, like, I, it's just so simple, right, how you just explain it to people. You work at McDonald's, there's 20 other people. There's two people that hate you. Now, you work at a, another company that has 100 people, right? Like, 10 might hate you. It just keeps going like that. So, you just got to understand that that's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, they're not wasting their time if you're not doing something that makes them speak about you you know what I mean so I just look at it as like 
But I've been doing it so long that I kind of look at it like from an OG perspective, like a boss perspective, right? Is that, okay, this person's hating on me? Nah, he's marketing me for free. He's promoting me. He's a worker. He's working for me. He's pushing my name out there. You know what I mean? Like, I just flipped the script in, in a whole different way. And I'm like, this guy's literally promoting me for free. That's perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because I know how to monetize negativity. I know how to monetize positivity. I know how to monetize. So, bro, you're just literally working for me for free. So, that's just how you should look at it. And anyone who's hating on anyone else, like, just think of it like that, man. I love the thought process of like whoever's got your name in their in their mouth at any time is literally actively marketing you out to five, six other people, bro, maybe more. But think about it, right? If you see someone else and they're oh, did you see that Sam guy? He's a, he's this, he's that, he's but you're gonna think like, why is he talking about him so much? Let me let me see what he's doing. Let me see you know what I mean? And then yeah, like if yeah. he does that to five people, two of those people might be like, Hold up, man, this guy's actually this guy's motivational. This guy's this, that. This guy's, I might convert two of the five people that you, th this guy was hating on me to. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's so powerful when you think about how you, how you construct that idea and, and the mentality shift you have to have to be able to conceptualize it. But essentially, if you, if you, it, it allows you to chill out more, doesn't it? Yeah, like you, you just chill. You, like you, you just understand life, that a hundred people better. equals 10 that's going to hate you. Yeah. Just understand that. So is it, is it, you, you're in a game of economics and the economics are in the favour of like, you're going to get a lot of haters on the way to success. I mean, Ty, Lope, Ty Lopez told me um, on, on a call I did with him probably two or three months ago that if there's not enough hate in the comments about me, I worry about it. Yeah. Because I'm not saying things that are polarising and shape-shifting enough to be able to cause the traction that I need to be able to go and sell in the marketplace. It's true, man. It's literally true. Yeah. And, that, and that's what literally unlocks all the doors. But no, I appreciate you dropping dropping the wisdom on here today. I like to ask this question. I've asked you this before, but I want to ask you it again because it's, it's so important and, and it might have changed from the last time. I can't remember what you said last time. I haven't, okay. haven't, I haven't listened to that part of the podcast again. <laughs> but if there is one thing that you can give this audience right now that's, that can move them 1% forward in their life from today, what would that be? I just literally say, understand that you're alive right now, right? You're breathing. You're not dead. Do you know how many people, how many humans have ever lived throughout the human existence? You're alive right now, right? You're breathing right now, and you're going to be breathing tomorrow. Just understand that that is a crazy gift, man. Just right that there alone is a crazy gift, and just utilize it, man. Love that, man. Love that, and I appreciate you. And guys, do me a solid favor, yeah? Subscribe to this on all the platforms and share this with your friends on everything. I'll also hopefully be getting a house tour from Sam further along this yes, journey as sir. well and uh, we, I will show you this crazy crazy penthouse in Dubai and everything that Sam's built on the back of this knowledge hey, Amen. And, and I just want to say too man man thank you man and like to see your journey as well and to see you keep going bro like that's why as soon as you message me like straight away cancel whatever I had to do man because I love uh, your journey man and I, I love your vision that. and um, and yeah man like happy to keep networking with you man and linking up with you man and your connection is my connects mate I appreciate that and thank you so I'm going <laughs> to shake your hand on that one mate I appreciate it bro and do us a favour guys share this with your friends I appreciate every single one of you listening and I hope this adds value to where you're at in life and moves you further forward much love guys do me a solid favour drop a comment below this video and let us know who you want on the podcast next